And if I ever knew what they be for these roots and lines, then I'm sure to find that I've been lied to time after time. And if you're blind, I'll give you sight just like the Don, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, okay, fine. Great. Well, awesome set for them, right? Thank you very much. Maybe we should start off with that, because it's just five songs. It's incredible. Yeah, kept it short, short, short and sweet. Short and sweet. My voice it? has been uh, taken to eat over the past So this is your weeks. 21st tour, is it? No, 21st show. First 21st show. Tour. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. 21st show. 21 tours would be pretty dope. Yeah, I was going to, yeah, sorry. Mm. The 21st show of the 21, of the coffee house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty intense, man. You do like two to three shows a day, yeah. and um, we're doing it all last week. So we did 15 shows last week, and then this is the last week doing it. But obviously, my voice is uh, at the beginning. I was going nuts, do you know what I mean? <laughs> all the high nerves, like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. keep going for it. And then after like three or four days, I was like, I'm not going to have to keep on doing this. I'm like this. I got this inhaler thing, you know, yeah, yeah. steam in there, good for my vocals, strepsils, herbal, uh, you know, herbal tea. So it's not. Quite as rock and roll as tour, uh, people yeah. might think. But yeah. You know what, how do you feel about that? How do you feel the EP is going? And I was just saying that um, with the sound of the EP, just hearing you um, live, I felt like it sounds like the EP is just as raw as, as you sound live. Is that what you maybe what you went for? Yeah, yeah. I think for um, for me, it's always really important to. Uh, I just like raw music and like raw sounds and stuff like even on a record like, I don't mind it if there's a mistake in the guitar playing or if someone you know fucks up a little bit I kind of find it quite endearing yeah. um, and I don't like uh, music that sounds really manufactured and overproduced which to be fair is quite difficult nowadays because in today's climate especially on Radio 1 and to break as an artist you have to essentially go into Radio 1 because it's such a big platform mm. um, obviously a lot of music on there is very polished and over mm -hmm. kind of done. So, um, it's always weird for me to sometimes trying to get the balance because uh, you know if it was me I'd probably just set up a mic and just you know record guitar and put it out but at the same time it's, it's great to hear my songs are made and I didn't want to get them made and break out to a bigger audience and hopefully sell records all over the world. Because yeah. we were talking earlier about how you, your earlier stuff is way more acoustic just you and Ed. Yeah, yeah. Just there was a video. Um, was it giving me up or giving up? Oh yes, yeah, don't give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a video. Video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now and then you had that one in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you were just recording, just you and him, just you and Ed, just like that. Yeah, yeah. And now it's you know Vivo and stuff taking off. Very bad. Yeah, yeah. How was working with him, yeah. Joey? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't actually, I didn't get to work with him one on one in yeah. the studio, which was, which would have been amazing. Mm. But um, it came about basically, you know, I'm a massive fan of Joey. I was over in LA doing some work for, uh, with the Social Experiment, Chance of Apple, and um, yeah. we were, <laughs> and we were in working in the same studio that Joey was. So uh, and I, I ended up working on some of my own stuff. And as I was like kind of leaving the studio, Joey had his sessions af after mine. At the time, I didn't really know this. And then um, the, I think the engineer was, you know, still tidying up some of my tracks and moving bits here and there. And Joey came in and heard it and was like, "Yeah, this, this guy's awesome." Like, I you know, was asking for it on his iPod or laptop or whatnot. And the next day, the engineer told me this. At first, I didn't believe him because I was like, "You know what, Hollywood Americans are like, man, eh, like proper big, you know, over exaggerated stuff." And so, like, he probably didn't say that actually. Yeah. And then, so I was kind of keeping my cool and then I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw him tweet on my lyrics. And um, then I was like, fuck you, know, like, mate, I've got to do a session with you, blah, blah, blah. So I tried to link up with him when I was in LA, but you know, he was obviously really busy and I was pretty busy getting the schedule done. Um, so when I came back to England and I was finishing the record of Watson School, I kind of had space for the rapper and the first person that came to mind was Joey. Yeah, I felt confident enough to reach out to him and his people and um, luckily they remembered how I was in the EU. Yeah. Get you in the rash, oh. Stop playing, see you checking the stack. Get the rain right now, just give me a dab. You ain't got much time, need to know now. If I can call you mine, then you hold me down, cause I'm the baby. What's the school? Yeah. It's all about you with Ed girls and how what you. One girl. That's maybe. Okay, okay, sorry. Me. With the people with a load of birds who just shagging. <laughs> 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 no, I just meant, okay, fine. Oh, yeah. Just the one girl. Just the one girl. Yeah. And then in the video, yeah. you've got, you're with this girl yeah, throughout yeah, the video yeah, yeah. in Spain. And it's kind of, 
romantic and yeah. stuff. So what's the score with what's what's happening with her? <laughs> well she has she is I got a clear silk so I got a girlfriend in it. Okay, like, right, I didn't know that, sorry. And I actually asked her to I asked her to to go, you know, to be in the video and go into Barcelona and she but she was actually working at the time. Um, so she kinda of put me in it, yeah. Um, but I was thinking of, you know, and the girl in the video, she's called Georgie, and I've been, you know, I've been friends with her for ages and for a long time, and close family friends, so um, I knew that I'd feel comfortable kind of shooting with her, do you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. sometimes when you get these actors in, they're all, you know, ridiculously good looking and that, and I just like get nervous, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The camera, and I, went, I feel uncomfortable, so it was important to take someone that you I knew really well, well yeah. and we could make it look like there was a kind of, you know, thing going on there. And, um, yes, it was wicked, but no, she's not. You're pretty soulful, and... Obviously that's inspired by Amy Winehouse, I heard you say in another video that you were really inspired by her. Yeah. Are there any other inspirations that... Yeah, you, I mean... Because your vocals and stuff are really soulful. I think like... Yeah, I mean, there's loads of stuff that's inspired me. Like the big ones were definitely Amy Winehouse, later on in life. And um, the first kind of person that got me into music, though it's not a vocal inspiration, that really has any kind of uh, influence on my music maybe today it was, it was Jimi Hendrix because mm -hmm. he was definitely the first person that got me into music and kind of introduced me to the world of music um, and then by getting into Jimi I obviously just, you know, explored all the kind of 60s yeah. and then got into 50s jazz and blues and stuff and then as soon as I got to blues there's like BB Kings do you know what I mean Chet Bakers and the jazz world mm -hmm. and then all of that kind of world opened up to me James Brown and I ended up doing this cover band at school which would go out and play loads of soul Songs, you know, Wilson Pickett and you know, all that stuff, and the Shake Rattle and all that and whatnot. Um, and then I discovered Amy, so I think kind of all of that process. The jazz and the rock. Yeah, you kind of all of And I think when you even, I think when I was listening to that stuff, I was still kind of growing up, so I didn't have like a really dis, you know, distinct voice, do you know what I mean? Like it changed, and then, um, yeah, I didn't know how to describe it, it wasn't like a, a kind of sit down and learn that like, I want to sing like this or sing like yeah. that. It's just a very natural it's organic process. Yeah, because I remember when I you know when I listened to indie music as well at the time when I was like 15, 16, I'd you know put that indie you know swell on it like everyone yeah, did. Yeah. Like, oh, fucking range, pop yeah. you know what I mean all that. So you do pick things up and you do imitate what you hear and I always say it's the same as like an accent. Like if you go to Liverpool and live in Liverpool you're gonna have a Scouse accent. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If you walk in Newcastle you're gonna have a Geordie accent. So that's the same for me in music. If I listen to you know, reggae or Amy or whatever, like eventually that's going to come through in the way I speak and the way I sing because that's how I'm kind of learning, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right.